It brings out the best in you. Here was a scene that I like very much. The scene with, with, with the seal. Give us a kiss. <laughs> I think he really liked it. <laughs> The difficulties Fleischer faced with Kirk Douglas were nothing when compared to those he experienced with another of his actors. Well, in my long experience of directing Seals, uh, this she was one of the easiest, but Seals are temperamental. We all had a lot of fun with, with the Seal, but you'd be doing a scene with the Seal and uh, you're in a take, doing it, you had rehearsed it, everything was fine. In the middle of the scene, the Seal would turn around and leave go flopping across the stage, outside, through the stage door, into the pen that she was kept in. And there wasn't much you could do about that, say, so you can't come back and promise her a better dressing room or something. But... Also, in the picture, I had a chance to sing. You know, this has been quite a picture for me. I've never been braver. I fight sharks, cannibals, giant squid, women. But the bravest thing I do is to open my mouth and sing. Believe me, with a voice like mine, it takes a lot of courage. <laughs> Prop man. I won't break it. Got a wheel of a tail to tell you lad. I love to sing, but nobody allows me to sing because I don't have a very good voice. Wheel of a tail, and it's all true, I swear by my tattoo. When I did this, this song, and Walt Disney told me, we're going to make a professional record of it. I said to my friend, Frank Sinatra, I said, this is Frank. I'm now a professional singer, so why don't we make a deal? I will give you all of my records, and you will give me all of your records. <laughs> that was the only record I had. We love a tale, and it's all true, I swear by my tattoo. Kirk had some knowledge of how to play the guitar, but he wanted to play it better and do tricks with it. And luckily, our uh, scenic designer, who was a total genius up, down, and sideways, Harper Goff, was a wonderful uh, uh, guitar player and banjo player and everything else. And uh, so he gave Kirk lessons on how to play the, the guitar. And Kirk picked it up right away. In a few hours, he was playing very well. And then he invented that trick of throwing it out and bringing it back and staying in rhythm. Got a whale of a tail to tell you about a whale of a tail or two by the flapping fish and the girls I've loved on nights like this with the moon above. A whale of a tail, and it's all true, I swear by my tattoo. Wonderful. I think it amazed everybody that uh, that he would do that sort of thing in the first place, but that he was so good at it. I swear by my tattoo. I thought I was wonderful, really. <laughs> but while there were plenty of stories about the camaraderie on the set of Twenty Thousand Leagues, not everyone was getting along. Hungarian-born Paul Lucas began his acting career in European films then rose to stardom in America after winning an Academy Award for Best Actor in Watch on the Rhine. Paul Lucas uh, was a wonderful, dramatic actor, but he was somehow uh, quick to take offense. And anybody said something to him a little sideways or, or what he thought had a certain inference in it, he would get very angry. It ended up, he, he kept threatening to bring lawsuits to everybody on the picture. Paul Lucas was a very stern Teutonic gentleman because he played a professor in the picture so he was the right guy for, for the part. I can hardly believe it, how one could conceive and build such a craft and in a single stroke harness power beyond the wildest dreams of science. Why, such a secret could revolutionize the world. Or destroy it. I think most of it was the fact that he was growing older and he was having memory problems. 
and he couldn't remember all the lines, and that embarrassed him. He had been a, a famous actor in Europe. He's a stage actor and a wonderful actor, and he would stumble on the lines or lose them, and then he would get mad at me and, get, and blame the writer for writing dialogue that he couldn't write. Anybody he could blame other than himself. But I understood that and um, just tried to keep him happy. I can't imagine anybody else playing that role as well as he played it. You know, that land is here with a boat. Yes, yes. That tall one must be the leader. They, they'd be coming back any moment. My buddy in the shooting of the picture were really <laughs> Peter Lorre. I liked him. Peter Lorre, who plays a very sympathetic role in 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, claims that the squid got the role that's usually reserved for him. One of Hollywood's most respected character actors, Peter Lorre, became an instant sensation when he starred in the German murder mystery M, then went on to perform in a number of American classics throughout the 40s and 50s. Hey, Pete. Peter. Huh? Come over here, will you? What is it, Kirk? Listen, would you do me a favor? Mm. Oh, uh, you all know Mr. Peter Lorre, a fine actor. Yes, but I can't sing. The uh, business of ruffling Peter Laurie's hair by Kirk Douglas, uh, that happened spontaneously on the set. It just happened. Uh, we all burst into laughter. And I said, we'll use that. we will use it. Let's use it again. Let's make it something we keep looking forward to happening on this picture. You were a very short guy. Just a lot of fun to work with. He's constantly joking. James Mason. Constantly doing practical jokes. He was a kind guy and very funny. I love having him tell me the stories when he works in, in Europe. You know, I'd much rather tell him about the scene with our fight. No, you know, there's no time for that, Peter. He just kept the whole set alive and laughing and joyful. We became very, very dear, close friends and remained that way after the picture. As I did with, uh, with Kirk and James, we all kind of hung together. With the casting and preliminary designs for the movie completed, it was time to focus on the logistical problems of filming. And it wasn't easy to coordinate, since shooting consumed three separate studio lots. At Disney Studios in Burbank, interior Nautilus scenes, the full-size deck Nautilus scenes, and second unit underwater miniature Nautilus scenes were filmed on stages two and three. At Universal International, a Western set was converted to look like San Francisco for the film's opening fight sequence that introduced Kirk Douglas. And work was going on as well over at 20th Century Fox, where miniature effects shots were filmed using the larger 22-foot Nautilus. They were also filming the scene where Nemo gets shot inside Volcania, as well as the scene where the cannibals rode out to the Nautilus to attack the ship. The actual attack was not the guys who were actually rowing the boats. For exotic realism, Disney sent a film unit to Jamaica. The cannibal sequence was shot on the, the island of Jamaica at Negril Beach, which is now one of the hottest spots on the island. It's a great resort. But then there was nothing, no, nobody, no, no roads. He went in a jeep to find the beach, the perfect beach. So even a tropical paradise had its own set of problems for the production. Tons of movie-making gear had to be shipped and carried to the site. For most, it was a grueling, laborious task. But then again, not everyone remembers Jamaica as being a troublesome place to film. What I remember about Jamaica, 
I remember that the girls were very beautiful. And they would sing those seductive songs like, please, missus, don't you touch my tomatoes. Because I was a young guy, but they were very beautiful. Then we had to organize uh, the natives, all of these people. I've forgotten how many, but there's at least a hundred of na the natives that we got to uh, play the roles of the cannibals. And I liked the natives in Jamaica. I like all people do, that have a certain amount of naivete about them. They took it in very good humor. There was a lot of fun doing that.